I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Chris Vermeulen, Chief Market Strategist at thetechnicaltraders.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to see you. Hi, great to see you, Charlotte. Thanks for having me back. Really nice to have you here online. We have so much to talk about right now, I think. And where I want to start is, of course, with the gold price. So we had the Federal Reserve hike rates yesterday by 25 basis points. It really seemed to light a fire under gold. It was at all-time highs or near all-time highs, depending on who you're asking and where you're looking. And I want to start by looking at gold in the short term. We'll move on to the long term, but what do you see coming for the gold price just in the short term? Yeah, well, let me let me share my chart real quick, and I'll kind of give you my my high level view here of what uh, I'm kind of seeing in the the gold market. So, obviously, this is, this is the daily chart of gold, which you should be able to see there. And I mean, we've had a really good pop in the last uh, three days, kind of leading up to the Fed and the Fed wanting to cut rates uh, or slow down rates here, and uh, we we're seeing a big pop. Now, the big the big thing here is if we look at the monthly chart of gold. And this is this is what I like to look at because we're in the middle of what I what I think is a very big super cycle that started in 2019 uh, when we broke out of this multi-year kind of basing stage, a stage one. And this is nothing more than a big bull flag, a, a big consolidation over the last couple of years since 2020. Uh, you know, and I, we're going to go a whole lot higher. This is a a rally that could last potentially three, five uh, plus years going forward, which is really exciting. Uh, the one thing that does stand out that we still need to be aware of is, you know, every time we see uh, one of these big spikes in gold that comes up into this kind of, you know, almost $2,100 level here, it's driven by some type of, of news event. And of course, we just had, you know, the financial system, the banks uh, start to go bankrupt. And uh, now we've got the Fed talking about uh, potentially slowing rates and we're starting to see gold pop. So, you know, we're up in this lofty level. The breakout zone for gold, which will start to get really exciting for me, is about the, the $2,089 level. So more or less, if we can break or hold above uh, 2,090 an ounce, especially on a monthly basis, that's the, the most significant uh, price chart that I like to follow. Then we could be off to the races for 2,600, uh, 2,700 gold as the next stop. And that's kind of just based off this big rally here Using uh, technical analysis, we can gauge based on this bull flag pattern how far up that next target is, which is twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars an ounce. So I'm really excited about that. The only catch here is that we could be going into a recession, and the last time we went into a recession and we saw uh, stocks collapse, a, a stage four decline, where uh, which is a very severe type of sell off. We've only had a couple of those in the last twenty years. The the tech bubble was a stage four decline. Uh, the 2008 financial crisis was one, and I think we're actually coming back into another type of stage four decline. And the reason I say that is because this is the chart of gold we're looking at, and gold pulled back about 34% during that stage four decline. Almost all assets get pulled down when there's forced liquidation. So we, while, while I'm very bullish on gold and I own a lot of physical metals for the long-term picture, uh, we could still see gold pull back in continue in this kind of this sideways channel and over the next year i think this this stage four decline could potentially keep precious metals and miners under wraps a little bit here for another five six seven months until the stock market maybe works itself out by having some type of financial reset where we get a big crash in equities uh going forward so that is the those are the two scenarios if we can get a close above you know 2090 on gold I'll be on a monthly basis. I'll be really bullish, really excited about the sector. Uh, but at this point, we haven't had a close there yet, and we're 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 testing it. But it's a a, ba a news based move, and there is potential here for gold to pull back to eighteen hundred very easily uh, throughout the rest of this year before it you I think starts that next major leg. So doesn't matter which way it goes. We just need to be aware of what it's doing and then follow suit, take action to trade or invest along that. Uh, that picture. But as you were saying earlier, short term, I mean, you still have to be bullish. I think it's right in resistance. I think gold might run out of steam here. So while we're bullish on the short term analysis over the past couple of months, you know, we're right in the nosebleed section where I'm not that excited about gold at this point, just because this is where sellers keep stepping in over the past two years. And um, it's a news driven uh, move at this point. 
really interesting. So a lot of points that I think we want to follow up on here from what you've just said. I wonder if we can look a little bit more at your chart. So I don't know a whole lot about technical analysis, but I have seen over the last couple of days people talking about this triple top in gold. And I see on your chart, you do have those three points there. I wonder if you can tell us what that means and explain to us what you're seeing there. Yeah, triple tops are known as, as they can be very bearish uh, simply because the, the first one, obviously no one knows where that top is going to be. And then the second one, you know, you kind of feel like the market is going to take off and run, but then it gets rejected. And then you go, oh, that that is a, a very significant resistance level. That That is definitely, there's a double top. Double tops are, you know, you could say just as bearish as a, as a triple top. And so now after we've got two of them, the third one becomes much more obvious. Now everyone's talking about it uh, because we've seen it happen twice before. So now everybody's kind of like, well, that is naturally going to be a resistance area, which is true. And which is why we saw it run up last month in April. We saw it run all the way up, almost broke out to new highs, but then closed down near the lows of the month. And that's because this is people are seeing this as a triple top. There's They're selling into gold when it reaches those lofty areas. And so now we still have that same scenario where it's back up here. And obviously there's a lot of people that are going to say, I'm going to sell my gold if it gets back to that top level. There's going to be another group of traders that are say, I'm going to short gold if it gets up there because I want to play the downside move. Uh, so that that's the view that a lot of traders, uh, short-term traders kind of have on the market. Uh, if we do break out, it could be very significant in terms of it'll spark another huge rally to the upside. But I mean, I, I triple top is uh, if, if it doesn't hold here, it's going to reverse and we're probably going to see a fairly significant pullback. I would think somewhere to the 1850 or 1800 level very easily. And that could happen over a uh, only a few months. So uh, triple top is known as a bearish sign until proven wrong. And that's the nice thing about technical analysis. I, a lot of people will trade on guessing if it's a triple top. I, I do the opposite. I wait for it to break a pattern and confirm that it's broken. And then I jump on and follow the trend. I don't try to, you know, short something near where I think a top is or try and buy a bottom where I think a bottom is because you never know if that's actually the top or the bottom. And the market has a great way of going a lot lower when you think you bought the low or, uh, you know, uh, when you go to trade short and get sell near a high, it just keeps on going higher and you get stuck on the wrong side. So I don't, I don't play that game. I, I follow the market. It's kind of our teacher and we just kind of follow in its footsteps. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. I think that was a really helpful way to look at it. I want to check back on some of the points that we discussed in our last interview, which was back in December of 2022. So when we're talking then, you were expecting a really big bottom for gold, silver, and the miners as well in, I believe, the first half of 2023. Now it sounds like maybe what you've seen has made you adjust your expectations and, and the prices that they may go down to are a little bit higher than you were first expecting. So is that is that the case? Uh, so I, I think this is this is the year 2023. I think this is where we're going to see uh, our recession kick in. We're going to see a big sell-off. Uh, the market has a great way. If it doesn't shake you out, it will wait you out. And of course, it'll keep. Sometimes we have to just keep kicking the pattern down the road. So I was hoping we we're going to see things bottom um, early this year, which you could argue maybe that it, it bottomed just late last year and it's already testing these highs. Uh, but my analysis is still the same. I still think we have to have that that financial reset, that uh, recession, a stage four decline, that I think will pull gold, silver, and miners down with it. Uh, and and that's pulling kind of the, the bottom in gold to late to the second half of this year, probably like right at the end of this year uh, is probably the earliest it would happen at this point is my thinking if we don't break out here and just start this new run. So I still think we're going to have that, that bottom this year probably in gold, but I definitely think it's going to be right near the end of the year and then uh, then rally from that point. And in terms of how deep the pullback could be, uh, the fact that gold is now right back up near these kind of all-time highs, if we go into a stage four decline, it gives it a lot of room to pull back and really still stay kind of, you know, somewhere within this these these lows over here. Um, so there's a lot of room for selling to, to kind of cushion it versus if, if it was trading down here and then we went into a stage four decline, it would pull it and, and create a huge bloodbath in selling. But now all it's going to do is pull it probably back down to support. 
So in that regard, I'm definitely a little more bullish here on gold in terms of I don't think it's going down to 1400 at this point. I think it's probably going 1650 at the lowest, maybe down to 1800. So it is looking more bullish in terms of a smaller pullback. Okay. And the reason I like to get clarity on, you know, what are the levels that we could go down to? What are the levels that we could potentially go up to is people are always hearing that you shouldn't buy high, right? You're supposed to buy low. And I think as we get to these higher levels in gold and silver, it becomes a little bit more difficult for people to understand where exactly they should be entering the market. So I wonder if you have any strategies for people who are trying to parse through that. Yeah, it, it's tough. I mean, I, I did a video a little while ago showing, you know, where uh, where I accumulated gold and silver uh, over the last few years. So I, we waited forever after the 2011, 2012 highs. And, as, you know, when we broke out to the, the start of this new kind of major bull market, this super cycle, I accumulated all through here. And I even accumulated a little bit right back here on this pullback. And so this is kind of the range that I, I, I purchased in. And I have no problems buying something that it, that is running higher. For example, if I was to go back and pull this chart back uh, and look at it from here, people would be like, oh, well, you didn't buy it anywhere near the low. You're buying it now. It's breaking to like multi-year highs. But I have no problems because this buying something high that is trending up, it's typically going to go higher. And the nice thing about an asset, especially gold, that is about to break to all-time highs, there is no overhead resistance up there. So buying something high probably means it's still going to go even higher. A trend is more likely to continue. Uh, so in terms of this, uh, this, to this pattern here, we're looking at a major, major cycle to the upside, very similar to this, this right here. Uh, this was the last super cycle from 2001, uh, 2002, all the way up to 2011. And we've really just started another one. And, and all, all this consolidation is really is just nothing more than one of these consolidations along the way, right? And it's just a series of pauses, bull flags within the major super cycle to the upside. Uh, so, you know, this kind of bucks a trend. You're not supposed to buy high, but if something is trending up, it's in a, its chart pattern is pointing to, you know, much, much higher prices uh, and it has no overhead resistance. I have no problems when it breaks out uh, jumping in and buying some more physical metals because I believe it's going to go a whole lot higher this is just going to be another major leg up in the market. Generally, I don't want to buy at resistance, um, and and I'm not planning to. I'm planning to wait for it to break. So I'm waiting for it to hit all-time highs before I actually even buy gold, which is a little bit different than my typical strategy. I trade physical metals um, different than like an active investment, so I don't mind um, paying higher prices, holding off for the long term uh, going forward. So uh, there's nothing wrong with buying high. The key is you have to be doing it for a reason. I have a technical reason. The chart patterns from multiple time frames say it's a very logical low, like a high probability of it continuing to rally higher. The problem is people get excited with news like this. They buy it here in the last couple of days thinking, you know, all the, all hell's breaking loose and gold's going to take off. But then gold pulls back for the next six months and goes back to 1800. And then they feel like, oh, I just bought the high. So if you buy high on an emotional with no real reasoning behind it, that's not a good thing. And that's where a lot of people struggle with is they buy it because they feel like they're missing out. They've got the FOMO and they hear all this news and they get sucked up and they see gold moving 1% in a day, which is a pretty big move for gold. And they feel like they're just missing it and it's running without them. That's usually a bad way to get in. I'll pay another 5% higher and get in when a new trend's confirmed, then jump in here and then have a losing position for potentially another four, five, eight months where I could put that money to work somewhere else and not have to go through that roller coaster of watching my money disappear and the anger and frustration that comes with buying high just because I was emotional and didn't want to miss out, right? Okay. I think it's really important to talk about the psychology behind what people do. I think that's really useful. I want to ask you as well about buying the physical metal because we had talked at one point about premiums and, and the concern that they might get quite a bit higher. So do you have any thoughts there? Are you seeing anything in that note? I honestly haven't looked at the premiums in a, in a, in a, in a month or so, so I'm not sure what they are. I do feel like they're, the premiums are ridiculous, and I feel like they could get a whole lot worse. I would like to think if we do get a big pullback in the market that maybe the premiums will come down a little bit. But um, unfortunately, I feel like we're all going to be stuck with the premium. There's no way around these kind of 
rip off premiums. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably very true. And so we've got a pretty good idea now of where gold may go in terms of the upside and the downside. Can we look a little bit more closely at silver and see what the potential might be there moving forward? Sure. So silver silver obviously is far off the highs that we saw back in 2011. It has had a very nice run over the past couple of months. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a late bloomer. I find silver... Uh, can can build these bases and and gold can keep moving up. I mean, when you think about where gold is, gold is like equivalent to silver trading up here. And that to me is because gold is the global safe haven. Everyone in the world naturally wants to accumulate gold. It's kind of the first thing that the average investor or individual kind of says if they're going to get into some alternative asset, a commodity, they think usually gold. Uh, so that's why, you know, there's a lot of fear in the market. People have moved to gold. And gold's trading at those lofty pr pricing. Silver is a little bit more of this speculative beast, and um, it's all over the place. It is nowhere near those highs, but silver has a great way of exploding and playing catch up. So, for example, gold might rally from 2100 to 2600. You know, you're looking at 25% roughly uh, percentage move, where silver could potentially, if it, it was to start to break out from from this kind of high over here, you know, it could rally. Uh, you know, 50, 60 percent, even more uh, to catch up with gold. And it can do it in a very, very quick time. We saw that happen over here where silver just kind of was underperforming and, and struggling. And then suddenly it just blew up and took off. And that's what I think most gold investors and silver and gold miners are waiting for, including myself. I mean, this, this last super cycle on gold was pretty much is life changing for a lot of people. You get into a, uh, these little stocks and silver and the amount of percentage moves they, 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 they go is unbelievable. It's so good that, you know, it, unfortunately people don't want to sell it and they'll hold it through, you know, a decade hoping, you know, it's going to come back to life. The key is knowing where to pull money off and protect your positions. But coming back to silver, I do think silver um, will probably blow up and take off to the upside. It'll rocket higher uh, back up to those, that 50 level, which is, you know, significant more return than gold. Uh, but it's going to probably be a much more volatile ride. And, uh, and when it happens, though, it, it is very quick. It, you know, it could be explosive. So I like gold and silver. Um, definitely, if I was to trade large, large sums of money, I would I would definitely split it between the two. Um, you know, you look at gold. A big day for gold is like a percent, a percent and a half. A big day for silver, like you move like three, five, eight percent sometimes in a day or uh, so it is a little more volatile for, you know, depending on what kind of assets you're using, trading capital or like long-term investment capital. Uh, I like to try and keep volatility down in long-term large accounts. Uh, so silver, definitely want to be be careful there. But I think there's great potential for, you know, $60 or 60% return or so in silver uh, once we do get this breakout. And, you know, if we just quickly go back, if we do get this bigger pullback in the in the stock market, uh, we could see silver. Maybe silver goes up and tests these highs again. Uh, but we could see silver easily just continue to trade, you know, in this this big range until the stock market has a reset, stocks, real estate, all those things kind of have a financial reset. Uh, precious metals are usually like the first sector, first commodity to really bottom. So even though the rest of the economy and the stock market might be falling, gold and silver should turn up first and then start their huge ascend. Uh, and that'll be a really good sign uh, for the economy. It'd be a good sign for the stock market, knowing that it, we're probably only a month or three away from a bottom in, in stocks. Uh, but I think there's going to be a lot of potential, but it might not happen just quite yet, uh, as we mentioned earlier. Right. And so positive outlook coming for gold and silver in the longer-ish term. But that comes alongside a, as you're calling it, a, a reset in the stock market. And we've talked a little bit about that before in the past I wonder if you could maybe put some numbers on that and tell us what we should be looking for, because reset is a pretty big concept, I think, for people to consider. It, it is. You know, I've got I've got a, a, an infographic here that I've shared uh, with you before, but I'll just cover it again really, really quickly. And the key here is the stock market moves in these different in four key stages. Stan Weinstein kind of coined this in his book uh, many years ago. Uh, you know, stage one is that basing stage, like we saw gold. It, it was it was basing for several years, and then we finally saw a breakout uh, in 2019, and it started that that new super cycle that we're in now. 
Uh, so gold is kind of in this stage two, major super cycle stage two, but the stock market is actually in this stage three topping phase is what is what I think we're in right now. And the problem here is that usually means we have to go through a stage four decline. And a lot of people think 2022 was the bear market. Uh, and it was, I mean, it was a, you know, 20% plus pullback in stocks, which is considered a bear market, but a stage four decline is, is like a financial reset where, you know, we've had so much going on printing and stimulus. And I, I think we're going to see a big unwinding event. And the last two times that we had a stage four was the, the tech bubble burst. And then we had the financial crisis. Both of those were stage four. Both of those were life threatening, um, you know, retirement threatening situations. In fact, in 2008, 2009, there was like 8,600 suicides directly linked to the fall of equity prices. So a stage four decline, when I say there's going to be a reset, I mean, it's serious. It is a dangerous market condition. People lose their life savings. They lose their minds and and do really crazy things. So this is why I keep trying to harp on it. I, I really don't want it to happen, but I think it's coming and everybody's much better knowing what to do be mentally prepared and have a game plan in place. Uh, so th this is kind of what we're looking for. And eventually when the stage four is coming close to a bottom, that's when we're going to start to see gold miners, you know, rip to the upside well before the market actually puts in a, a bottom. But during this decline is when gold, silver miners are going to pull back. And I mean, we've got to, you know, if we, if we go back here and just take a look at the emotions of the market, uh, we're kind of in this complacency stage. People don't want to think, you know, the bear market has just started and that there's a whole lot more pain coming. Uh, and we were seeing a lot of people buy, um, accumulate stocks. A lot of money's been flowing into growth stocks, which is, uh, it's not surprising, but a lot of people are thinking the bear market is over. And, um, you know, we're, we're in the loop of the market. So I think we have a better kind of gut feeling of what's going on. I, th I see a recession coming. I see a big correction coming. But the masses don't. They don't. They don't think the bottom's going to fall out, and they're going to have a huge reset in their assets. Uh, but this is the stage we're going to go through. It's going to start to break down. They're not going to believe what's happening, and then they're going to be in denial. It's another 2008 all over again. Uh, I mean, you know, the, we're looking at potential five, six, ten years, maybe to recover from one of these um, if you get caught on the wrong side, and it becomes, you know, flat out depressing. And that's that's what I'm trying to help people avoid. And there's a great way to avoid this. There's a, a way to profit from this. And that's what I focus on with ETFs and uh, in my strategies. And that's because we follow price. We don't, you know, trade on emotions. And understanding these big cycles, these four stages, they happen on any chart time frame. But I like to look at it at the daily and the monthly charts. And if you know what stage we're in, you can trade a strategy that works with that stage. Every stage requires a different type of strategy or a twist, you need to modify your strategy because the market actually moves and behaves differently in all of those stages. And, you know, we go down and we look at the cycle of the markets. This blue cycle is the stock market and it tells you where typical sectors perform really well. 2022, energy was a massive leader. This year, precious metals miners are the leader. They are some of the last sectors to do well just before the stock market goes into a top. We saw this in 2008. When gold miners are leading the way and flying higher like they are, we're usually only a couple months away from the actual major next stage, the stage four decline. And then we're going to go into a decline. And then finally, we're going to get the data that says, oh, we're in a recession, you know, because it's super delayed based on quarter, uh, quarter uh, earnings or GDP and stuff like that. So all the things are coming together for the perfect storm that is going to like annihilate stress test. Uh, the average retirement or retiree or somebody who's got a lot of money, they're going to, you know, watch decades of, of savings and hard work potentially vanish and they have to wait a long time. So that's the view. And that's what I'm really trying to share with people is understand the market is moving in four stages and all these little interworkings so you can manage and follow the trends with strategies that uh, work in, in that regard. So if, if we were to go to the SP 500 real quick, just because uh, we want to look at that, this, this is the monthly chart, and this is the complacency stage that we're, we're trading in. We've had the first kind of breakdown, and the market is, uh, you know, 
could continue higher for a little bit, but it is on the verge of a potential 30, 40, 50% correction. And there's people calling for an 80% correction, which is pretty extreme, but a 30 to 50% is in the norm. We've seen it happen before the 2000, the, the tech bubble was like an 85% correction in the NASDAQ. Um, you know, we saw the 2008 top. This was the little, little complacency stage in the 2008 top before we did the stage four decline. It looks tiny compared to where we are now, but when you go back in time and you look at these previous two bear markets, there wasn't much of a complacency rally. It broke down in 2000 and then went into a stage four decline. Here it broke down and had a complacency move and then broke into a stage four decline. And then when we go fast forward to where we are here, we've broken down. We're, we're in this stage four, or, uh, sorry, the stage three topping phase, a complacency stage on the verge of starting that next leg down. So I'm not, I'm not a doom and gloomer. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just showing, this is what the charts are showing. This is what sector rotation, volume flows are telling us. Um, I mean, the news and everything to me is super bearish. Everything's falling apart. We're not even in a recession and banks are blowing up. So, I mean, it's, you better be prepared to stand aside or benefit from this potential collapse. And if it doesn't collapse, perfect. Well, if it goes up, we'll jump on, on board. We'll ride the trend higher. That's the nice thing about technicals. So kind of a bit of a rant there, but I'm trying to trying to condense everything down to just a really high level of where we are and the basics of the stock market, how it moves and how you need to kind of manage your, your, your money. I think that was great information for all the investors out there. And I have, I have one more point just on emotion versus, I know that you really focus on the technicals. You try to cut out all of that noise, but you know, you only touched just briefly on the banking sector and all the issues that are going on there. I think that is the potential to get very emotional and probably plays some kind of role in all of this. So just briefly, how are you seeing that fit into all the, the different circumstances we have going on? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the, you know, the, the fact that, you know, banks were all fine and cheery then, you know, uh, Silicon Valley bank in like a 48 hour window gets a run and goes out of business. And then we have the, another big one this week. Uh, I don't think anybody should be surprised. It's, I think this is just the beginning. We're going to start hearing lots of news of probably more layoffs. We're going to hear more banking uh, implosions. We're going to hear companies going bankrupt eventually. I mean, things are probably going to get pretty pretty bleak uh, if if we're, we continue on the trajectory that we're on. Uh, I think the banking system blowing up, I mean, it's definitely scared me. You can't keep money in a bank. Uh, it is pretty scary. I mean, that's a big driver of uh, Bitcoin, of gold and silver is, you know, if I can't go keep some money sitting in cash, safe in cash for an opportunity after this, where can I put it? Because I'm worried my bank is going to blow up, right? So people are moving to physical assets and it really is the perfect storm uh, for gold and silver. It, very similar like it was in 2008. Banks are blowing up. Everybody's losing assets. But gold still ended up getting sucked down with the, the bloodbath of selling. And that's what I still think could happen. Uh, but right now, the banking system, the news hitting is all bullish for gold. And that's why we keep seeing it go up. We just, when eventually we get high volume selling and real panic where people are, are in real fear, uh, it will probably pull the metals back down. But um, everything right now is just saying, you know, gold is the safe, buy your, buy your bars and silver blocks and keep them safe. Don't store them in a bank. <laughs> That's true. This is the kind of environment that gold and, of course, silver, they really like. So very interesting to watch. So we've covered a lot of ground here. And as we're wrapping up, I want to touch on some of your news. You mentioned you've got a book coming out. It's coming on May 15th, which is your birthday. I'm going to remember it because it's my sister's birthday, too. Can you tell us a little bit about the book, where we can find it, what it's about, what people will learn from reading it? Sure. Yeah. So I'm coming out with a new, a new book called Asset Revesting. And how to exclusively hold assets rising in value, profit during bear markets, and continue building wealth in retirement. And re really what this is, is a, a different strategy from the buy and hold or the buy and hope strategy. Instead of riding the volatile, you know, hold stocks and bonds and, and ride it out through the roller coasters, asset revesting is totally different. You're, you're reinvesting your assets in whatever asset is performing better. So this strategy, which is a totally different style, uh, is looking through the lens of an asset hierarchy. So we focus on uh, the top of the hierarchy will be whichever assets uh, in ind individual favors. In my case, I focus on the US stock market. So the stock indexes are the, are the top uh, prime candidate to make the most money. 
and then you've got bonds, treasuries, and then you've got the U.S. dollar index, and then you've got cash. And as you move down the hierarchy, they, they move to slower and slower, less volatile assets. They have a, a negative or inverse uh, correlation to, or no correlation to the other assets. And doesn't matter what's going on, as chaos picks up, we move down the hierarchy to less volatility assets. And it doesn't matter if like, for example, the dollar is rallying or if it's falling, there's a long or an inverse ETF. So we can we could benefit kind of sitting in a cash position, but playing rallies or sell-offs in the uh, different asset classes themselves. So it's a very different way. I don't believe in diversification. I don't believe in um, the buy and hold strategy. I think it's a great way to get the status quo average returns. Like when you look at diversification, uh, you know, you hold a whole bunch of different assets. Some are falling, some are rising. Uh, during a bear market, almost all are falling. Uh, so you don't really get any real performance. Asset revesting is different. It says, okay, we're going to be in the best asset uh, at any given time. If the stock market is rising, we put our money into the stock market. And we we manage those positions going up. If it's not going up, we look at bonds. If bonds aren't favorable, we go to the dollar uh, ETFs. And if we don't like either of any of those positions, then we can sit in cash and just collect interest. So you know, we don't split our money over a whole bunch of different assets. We don't spread it around like peanut butter or anything like that. We actually just focus on where's the best spot to put our money. Is it trending in a direction that we can benefit from? If so, we're putting our money there. If there's nothing, we sit in cash. And uh, that's one thing that subscribers, you know, uh, I get emails and we get comments in our members area. They're like, you know, during 2022 bear market, people are like, I can't believe how good it feels to have no positions and sit in cash or to benefit from you know, uh, the dollar index going up while the rest of the market is falling apart. It is a completely different investing experience. Uh, it takes away all the roller coaster rides, uh, all the downside risk. It's a pretty uh, incredible opportunity, a, a very new way, or it's not new, but it's a different way for investors to see the markets and manage their capital. So I'm really excited to, to share this strategy and kind of bring it to light, put a name to it. I've been doing this for uh, you know, over 20 years. And finally, I'm like, you know what? I need to put a name on this. We need to get this out. So others, investors, individuals can start creating their own asset hierarchies, creating their own strategies. There's no more need to to suffer through bear markets and stage four declines and get, you know, annihilated on a financial side uh, when you can put things in place that allow you to sidestep it or benefit from uh, any market trend going forward. So I'm really excited to, to get this book out uh, on my birthday. Very exciting. So May 15th, we'll leave a link to that in the video description if people want to check it out. I think definitely that strategy sounds very appealing right now, given everything that's going on in the markets. Thank you so much for coming on to discuss gold and silver and, and everything else. Really great to hear from you. Thanks for having me, Charlotte. Take care. Appreciate of it. Course. Of course. And once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Chris Bernulin with the technicaltraders.com.